Hey guys, this is Ryan from 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar podcast. Today, we're gonna to be talking about something so important for your rig, so important for your tone. I mean, people obsess over their guitar picks, the thing in between you and your strings. They obsess over their strings, the thing in between you and your guitar. They obsess over cables, the thing in between your guitar and the rest of your rig. What about the thing that's in between you and your pedals? I'm talking about shoes. Shoes are so important for how you plan your set, how you plan your rig out, how you plan, you know, every single song. You've got to look at your song list and ask yourself, are these shoes going to work for each song? Am I going to have to change shoes between songs? We're going to explore shoes here today and we're going to figure out what makes a good pedal boarding shoe, what makes the best shoe for your tone, for your set. Here we go. I mean, first off, I'm already holding it. I've got these Doc Martens here. They're kind of like a wingtip, half boot kind of hybrid. I've had these for over 15 years now. Love these shoes. They're never going to leave my, uh, my, my quiver here. Uh, these are a great example of a praise and worship boot. Perfect for church playing. It's a great example of a rock boot. Looks great on a rock and roll stage. And it's a great shoe for adjusting pedals. And that's really the big kicker for shoes. You wanna make sure you have a shoe that you can use as a tool to adjust your pedals on the fly. Let's grab the Wallers 385 here. It's a great example of a pedal that you'd use in a live set. You'd use this for praise and worship. Uh, it's got these knobs with a little bit of a grip on the side. The great thing about this shoe is this protruding ring of rubber coming out of the sole here. That's gonna make a big difference when you're tweaking because you can get that rubber edge right against the knob and make just smooth and precise little adjustments from either side of the shoe, really. Fantastic edge on this shoe. Really look for that quality when you're shopping for a pedal boarding shoe. Another quality you need to look for is how deep and how wide the tread is. You don't want a tread that's super wide and super deep because your foot switch here is gonna get caught in there, you're gonna have false starts, you're gonna fumble on the switch. You need a shoe that engages and disengages that switch every time. And this shoe delivers in that department. It's also pretty comfortable. Good arch support on this one, 15 years later. It's still a comfortable shoe. Really nice and worn in, nice natural relking. Here on the leather, I oil it every now and then. I give it a nice polish, but this shoe likes to look a little rough. It looks to like, it likes to look like you've really loved it. And that's something that really puts the shoe into the category of a wonderful praise and worship boot. You've got to have a shoe like this for praise and worship, especially during the winter time. It's a little warmer, goes with more formal, you know, like sweater vests, put a scarf with this, it's going to look great. Next shoe, now here's a shoe, and although it's very comfortable, you could spend all day on your feet in this shoe, good walking shoe, and affordable, the Sasani Jazz. That's the problem. This is a jazz shoe. Jazz players don't use pedal boards, not like praise and worshipers do. And you'll notice these deep and wide gaps here in the tread. You're gonna get caught up you're gonna have false starts on your pedals. It's just gonna be a nightmare. If you're the type of guy or the type of girl that is a slider, you slide your foot off of the pedal after you engage it or disengage it, you're gonna have a lot of trouble with this shoe. It's just gonna bind up. Like I said, false starts. It's just too deep. Your little switch gets caught in there. It adjusts okay. It's kind of a pain in the butt because you do have these big chunks of rubber here on the side. You're gonna feel each one of those as you adjust. Not great. This is not a great pedal boarding shoe. But like I said, it's affordable, it's comfortable. It's just not for when you're pedal boarding. It looks good enough. It's got a good look. Not for pedal boarding though. Next shoe. 
Now here's an example of a really good, really affordable pedal boarding shoe. This is my preferred shoe for praise and worshiping, 100%. You'll notice a nice tight pattern on the tread down here. You're not gonna get caught, no false starts. It's light and flexible. You can feel your toes through this and feel exactly where the switch is. Perfect engagement and disengagement every time. Very nice, relatively smooth, but grippy rubber edge here. Perfect for tweaking knobs. Beautiful for tweaking knobs. You can get down on these lower knobs too. They've never let me down. Great shoe, these are super affordable. They're not jazz shoes, that's for sure. These are great for praise and worship. These are great for punk rock. These are great for classic rock, all the rock genres, anything with pedals. This is a great shoe. Next up, we got something a little bit more exotic. Purple PF Flyers. Now this is gonna apply to Converse too. Similar style, you got this big, bumpy rubber wrap around the toe. What's that gonna do for you? It grips very nicely. You can definitely adjust your knobs with the toe portion of the shoe, but those big bumps on the edge, they're gonna give you a tactile response that not everyone's gonna be a fan of. Some people are gonna love it. It's gonna feel like, oh, I want two clicks to the left. And you can get that two click feeling. It also has a nice even tread on the bottom here. No false starts, no grabbing if you're a dragger. Important qualities to have. I'm not a huge fan of the comfort of these shoes. There's no arch support. If you're a praise and worshiper, you do three sets on a Sunday, this is not gonna be a great shoe. Your back is gonna be killing you at the end of the day. Your dogs are gonna be barking. But if you've got a one set church, only one service, and you want to make a visual impression, this is a good look. If you're a rock and roll guy, you're playing at a bar, the stage is up higher and people are looking over the stage, looking over the monitors to see what pedals you use, they're going to see these shoes too. And it's going to make a great impression. They're wild looking, but they're also classic looking. Really fun shoe. There are some trade-offs. You have to like that tactile response on your knobs. And now for the fifth and final shoe. This is a classic. It's probably the most important shoe in terms of praise and worshiping. Uh, sometimes it's frowned upon in our culture, depending on your geography. The sandal. This is a rainbow leather sandal that I've had for a long time. It's well worn in, nice natural relic on this. Uh, in some parts of the country, they frown on people wearing sandals in church. I live in Southern California. People are totally fine with it. If you live in a geography or attended church where they are fine with sandals, especially on stage, this is your premium praise and worship pedal boarding option. This one's really nice and worn in, but even when it was new, super flat on the bottom, you're never gonna bind up. You're never gonna have a false start. If you're worried about it, you can stick out your big toe, get skin to metal contact, 100% confidence that you're going to engage and disengage your pedal every single time. Nice and smooth contact with the knob on the edges. There's no bumps here. You've got a combination of some very natural feeling materials here. You have leather on the top. That leather is going to catch that. It doesn't get more natural than that. Then you've got the soft rubber in the middle and then a hard rubber on the bottom. You have a collection of materials at your disposal to adjust your pedals for premium pedal boarding. And of course, you want to get really manual. You can kick these off in a second. You kick these off, go full barefoot. This is holy ground. You're praising worshiping. Get rid of these things. Now you just got your toes. You can get your toes in there, 
adjust every knob as small or big as you want, have complete and direct contact with the switch. Say you've got a pedal like this that has little selector switches. You can get your pinky tone there. Really hook onto those, really adjust them, get every knob. I mean, this guy has a miniature pot here at the top. There's been times I've got my toes in there and I adjust that. So that's been my, uh, my review of shoes. I hope you learned something. I hope I've given you something to think about. I hope it helps your rig. I hope it helps your set. I hope it helps you select the songs in your set. I hope it helps your stage presence. All of these things are affected by your shoes. The reliability of your rig are affected by your shoes. It's so important. Thanks for watching. Go listen to our podcast if you want to learn more. See you later.